Alrighty guys, so today we are going to be talking about Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Now this is in the new section of Global Dokkan, so Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is basically all but confirmed. He is going to be the next Dokkan Fest that is going to be coming over here to Global Dokkan. Again, this is the teaser for his Dokkan event. And then there is going to be a new stage added to the Shadow Dragon Saga uh, story event. It says, new stage skill orbs that can be equipped to Shadow Dragon Saga category characters. So kind of like the Universe 6 event where, you know, you get orbs, uh, skill orbs specifically for Universe 6 category units. Uh, this story event is going to have um, skill orbs specifically for Shadow Dragon Saga units. So again, they're going to probably not revamp it, but they're probably just going to add another stage. So what, an extra free Dragonstone right there. Uh, so taking a look at the timeline of events for JP Dokkan, uh, this was the um, all like like the whole celebration for JP. They had of course um, <clears throat> the Dokkan event and the banner, uh, the new stage for the Shadow Dragon Saga, an infinite Dragon Ball history, and then uh, this this new story event where uh, you get this free to play Great Ape Vegeta. Now let's take a quick look at. It's stage 13. I'm not sure if that's out on global yet. I just want to take a quick look at what it is. Um, I think it might be against all Shadow Dragon Saga bosses. Because if we go all the way down, let's... Okay, well, please load a little faster, por favor. Okay, a lot of stages now that I'm, now that I'm looking at it. Bobby's Army, Majin Buu... And then this one is, yeah, so it's all going to be the Shadow Dragons, so that's good to know. Now let's go ahead and let's head back. So that Infinite Dragon Ball History stage is going to be pure Shadow Dragons. Um, please load a little bit faster. See, this is my issue with the Dokkan Wiki. Great source of information, it's just that sometimes I think... It's probably my internet, but still, it's just like, let me try to refresh the page. It's, it takes forever. Um, yeah, so I, I think we now can't see the images, so that's fun. Uh, well, anyways, let's just start talking about the units, and then we'll kind of talk about, um, other units that could come during the celebration that, again, we have not gotten over here on Global, but again, could come with the celebration. Oh, here we go. Alright, so actually, let's just start on with that first. So, of course, Gogeta's banner is going to be dropping, as well as the uh, side banner unit, which is going to be this Nova Shenron, a new Nova Shenron. Um, I personally would have rather seen maybe like an Ice uh, Shenron, uh, the counterpart to Nova Shenron. Um, like I said before, the new free-to-play uh, Vegeta, a new Dokkan Ultimate Clash, which is really nice, and then this. This is the most interesting part to me, because again, we don't know if this will come with uh, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, but there is a high chance I personally think that it could. Because number one, we have not had uh, Mass Saiyan. <coughs> Excuse me, Jesus. Um, we have not had Mass Saiyan's EZA, so again, I think it would be a great time to um, implement that in-game. Because again, JP is going to be celebrating their 6th year anniversary. And I'm going to sneeze again. I honestly don't know what's up with me. I don't know why I keep sneezing. Like, I only sneeze when I'm recording these videos. Like, I swear to God. Mass Saiyan Easy A. Prime Battle um, Easy Area, which is going to be very good in terms of content. And here we go again. I swear to God. Why do I always sneeze when I'm trying to record a video? It only happens when I'm recording this video. Anyways, so let's just continue on. Mass Saiyan's EZA would be very good in terms of content, as well as a Prime Battle Easy Area, because again, JP's going to be having a lot of content with story events, EZAs, the banners, new units, all that stuff. Now, De uh, Demigra, Mira, and Toa. Now these units, again, they're Dragon Ball, I believe they're Heroes, as well as Xenoverse uh, units. <clears throat> um, and they came with this. Actually, no, they did not come with this. They actually came a little. They they came a little bit earlier, but I think we you. I think you guys get what I'm saying. Uh, again, they were basically leading into the uh, Dragon Ball Heroes collaboration. So basically, what I think is that what they could do to make the celebration a lot more interesting is I think they're going to combine all of this. So I think they're going to combine the 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 uh, explosive chain battle, another one, 
um, um, Omega Shenron, and then they're going to combine um, as well uh, these Awakenings, two Easy A's, and then of course the banner, the new unit, the story event, and then the infinite Dragon Ball history stage. Because again, this would actually be a really, really good celebration. Because if we look over it in terms of content, a new story event, infinite Dragon Ball history stage, a regular Easy A, an Easy Area, an explosive chain battle, a Dokkan Ultimate Clash, so like, if they combine all of this, so the, the cutoff would be these two easy A's. If they combine all of this, this would make to be a very, very good celebration. Because uh, again, it, I mean, it would give Global a lot of content. Uh, because again, JP is going to be celebrating the 6th year anniversary. So I think uh, a way to keep, you know, Global players incentivized as well as, you know, maybe not feel like, oh, we don't have, you know, a lot of stuff to do. You know, JP's got the anniversary going on. They have everything, but we don't. I think a great way of, you know, kind of like balancing the games would be to um, give us, you know, what I said, an explosive chain battle, infinite Dragon Ball history stage, all of that good stuff I think would be absolutely amazing. And I'm going to move back a little bit because now my computer's starting to hiss. Not exactly the best sound you want to be hearing because it's pretty annoying. All right, so let's talk about the units uh, in this next section. Um, can you please connect? Thank you. All right. We're going to be talking about Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Now, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, again, I don't even have to mention this. I think we've all seen those to truth videos. Is a very good unit and easily uh, the best T1 in the game. I personally agree with the statement by the truth that he's the best T1 in the game, and you guys will see why in just a bit. So, Healy's great 8 power, uh, giant 8 power, not great 8 power, giant 8 power, 3 key, 170% to stats. Uh, again, the only leader that we have on global currently is the Super Saiyan 4 Broly, who's only 130%. And then he's also Shadow Dragon Saga, 3 key, 150% to stats. Uh, so again, I think he is the best Shadow Dragon Saga leader that we have right now. I don't know why they didn't make him 172, uh, you know, 170% to all stats, but I think they might be saving that for like a, a, a kind of like an LR Goku and Vegeta that then fuse into uh, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Uh, his super attack, Big Bang Kamehameha, greatly raises attack and defense for one turn and causes immense damage to the enemy. So already, again, greatly raising attack and defense is super, super beneficial. And then he gets 200% attack and defense th at the start of turn. So already, I think you, you guys can begin to see why he is the best T1 in the game. He gets 4 key and an extra 40% attack and defense and super effective against all types for 8 turns from the start of turn. High chance of... So he has a 50% chance of being effective against all types starting from the 9th turn, and then he also has a high chance of evading enemy super attacks and countering with tremendous power. So just looking at his passive, this is what makes him the best unit in the game. He has 200% attack and defense at the start of turn, so he's going to be well over 150k, 100k defense, depending on, you know, if you have, you know, one or more dupes into him. He's going to be well over, I would say, 120, you know, 100k defense. He greatly raises it on super attack. He gets an additional 40% attack and defense in 4 key, meaning he's going to be able to, like, super every single turn. And then he's super effective against all types uh, for 8 turns, which, again, you're probably going to be using him in, you know, Super Battle Road and all those really difficult stages, which, again, do not usually last, uh, you know, till turn 8. So already, he is very, very powerful and very, very good. And even if the extra 40% attack and defense wears off, and you're, you know, using him in the legendary Goku event, he still has 200% attack and defense, and he greatly raises it. And if he gets, what, a double super, he's going to be well over maybe like 300k defense. And then he has a 50% chance of evading enemy super attacks and countering. Uh, we did not even factor that in. And I think you guys are beginning to now see how I see Gogeta as the best unit in the game. And then, to top it all off, he has an active skill where he gets 40% attack and defense, and then he lowers enemies' attack and defense by 40%. And he only needs to take 4 hits in order for this to activate. So in Super Battle Road, you basically let Gogeta be in the first slot, he gets hit four times, next turn, active skill, lowers the enemy's attack and defense by 40%, we all know how crazy STR Omega Shenron is, he gets 40% attack and defense on top of his 240% attack and defense that he has, 
as well as his super effective against all types, as well as his 50% chance to counter, as well as the fact that he will greatly raise his defense on super attack. So, again, best unit in the game. I really don't see an argument to why he isn't. Even if the 8 turns run out, again, the active skill. You still have the active skill. Um, so, again, Gogeta's the best unit in the game. He's basically going to be coming to Dokkan, and I cannot wait. Next up, the banner unit. We're going to be talking about Nova... Sh Actually, no, this is not the banner unit. That's Vegeta. That's a free-to-play unit. This is the banner unit. This is Nova Shenron. I had him mixed up. So, Nova Shenron. Mouse, come on, work. Oh, no, I went to... There we go. So, Nova Shenron, he leads Shadow Dragon for key 1, 20% to stats. Uh, personally, I would have rather, you know, him be a different type of leader, just because, again, we currently have a decent amount of Shadow Dragon Saga leaders. Uh, again, the OG Omega Shenron, and then there's a ton of other little sub-leaders. I think they should have made this Nova Shenron maybe lead one of the smaller categories, or, or one of the... Yeah, yeah, smaller, dumb categories that they made. Um... Super Attack Burning Spin raises attack for three turns, causes supreme damage, and seals Super Attack. Now, I would have preferred if he did raises attack and defense for three turns, I think would have been much better. Uh, and then the fact that he seals is actually really, really beneficial in Super Battle Road, so he has a use there. He gets 140% attack and defense at the start of turn, already extremely good. He gets an additional 40% attack and defense and a high chance of performing a critical hit when attacking extreme class enemies. Uh, not a very hard condition to get, so he's basically going to be at a 180% attack and defense if you are fighting extreme class enemies, which is really, really good. And then two key and another 40% attack and defense when there is a Shadow Dragon category enemy. Uh, Shadow Dragon Saga category ally, super class, plus 40% to defense. So, just looking at Nova, um, this Nova appears to be very good. Again, very solid unit. He does not appear to be super crazy. Um, the only place I could see him being like an absolute dominant monster is Shadow Dragon Saga Category Super Battle Road. Because again, he's limited to, number one, fighting extreme class enemies in order to get that extra attack and defensive buff. And then he's limited to Shadow Dragon Saga Category enemies if you want another attack and defensive buff and two key. And then the last part of his passive again, he's only supporting Shadow Dragon Super Class Allies, which is a bummer. Um, I would have preferred if they maybe just made it, you know, he supports all allies, uh, attack and defense plus 40%, you know. But, again, that would have been, I think in Dokkan's mind, a little too broken, though I don't really see how that would be. But, again, this Nova Shenron is a solid unit. He's, he's just very limited to the Shadow Dragon Saga uh, category, so just keep that in mind if you do pull him. But again, he seems very solid. Next up, we're going to be talking about is Vegeta. So, Limit Breaking Challenge Vegeta GT uh, Giant Ape, for sure. Uh, I'm going to be farming this guy up. This guy actually seems to be a very, very impressive unit, and his animations are actually really, really good. Uh, so, he's Giant Ape Power, 3 key, 50% to stats. Uh, again, it does appear that he could get an EZ8 in the future. Um, he did not get an EZ8 on JP, but again, maybe in the future they could actually EZ8 this guy. Uh, Super Attack, Final Shine Attack, raises attack for one turn, causes supreme damage to enemy, and lowers defense. Um, I would have preferred if he lowered attack as well, but again, he, he is a free-to-play unit. Uh, passive skill, Bulma's Idea. 80% uh, attack and defense at the start of turn. He gets an additional 80% attack and defense when there is another Giant Ape Power category ally attacking in the same turn. Turn into Giant Ape when conditions are met, and then he transforms into his Great Ape when HP is 50% or less starting from the 4th turn from the start of battle once only. Uh, again, if they had just kept it at 50% HP and he just instantly transforms, I think that would have been much better. Um, I don't like it when they put turn restrictions on him because, again, it really makes no sense. Like, it's a Giant Ape transformation like it's not like a super you know on god amazing transformation that he's going to be doing come on connect thank you all right so in his great ape uh form he, his passive is only that he gets an, an extra key i believe per key sphere or it could just be that he gets just you know one key when he uh transforms into the great ape uh but we'll see uh please connect mouse there we go all right next up is uh, mass, uh, the Mass Saiyan, 
basically Bardock wearing an evil spooky mask. So again, uh, from here on out, I'm going to be talking about hypothetical units that could come. Again, they're more than likely going to come, in my opinion, just based off of the timeline of events. Uh, but just to play it safe, again, I don't like to maybe give people false information. So we'll see what happens uh, when we get the details for the celebration. But again, I would expect uh, Mass Saiyan and then Toa, Mira, and Demigra to come with the celebration. So uh, if we go down here... Uh, so Mass Saiyan, after his EZA, he's 3 key, 80% to stats, uh, very, you know, unimpressive leader skill, but again, we don't really focus on that anymore when it comes to these EZA units. He raises attack and defense, and then he lowers attack and defense, which is very good, again, great super battle road, uh, passive right there, or super attack effect, not passive. And then his passive is 100% attack and defense, so already very, very solid. He gets an additional key and 50% attack when facing two or less enemies. Uh, so basically, the, the way that, wor that works is if you're facing one enemy, he gets the key and the attack buff. And then he gets another key and 30% attack and defense when facing one enemy. So basically, you'll get his whole passive if you're only facing one enemy. But if you're facing two, you'll, you'll only get the first part, which is the key and 50% attack. Uh, so again, this Bardock is actually very, very good. Um, I've seen a couple videos done on him uh, by like the truth and all that. Uh, he's a very solid unit. Uh, he's very, very good. The only issue is, again, his links are a little wonky. Again, they gave him Berserker over 9,000. Just links that honestly don't make a whole lot of sense, uh, especially those two because, again, Ber uh, Berserker, even at level 10, you have to fall under HP thresholds, and, you know, that's just not fun at all. Uh, so... Let's talk about... Please connect, thank you. Let's talk about Toa. So Toa is a very, very good unit. She is a support type based unit, so already she has immense value. Uh, her leader skill is completely useless, just 15% attack and defense per key sphere obtained, and recovers 1000 HP per key sphere of character's type gained. You're probably not gonna run her, run her as a leader, and then on her super attack, she greatly lowers defense and seals super attack. Um, I would have preferred, again, if she also lowered uh, attack on her super attack. Uh, but again, sealing is still a very, very good effect. Passive. Um, she gives all allies three key, which already immediately is very good. Uh, very good. Especially if you're running, you know, extreme tech super battle road. She's going to be very good in there. She gets an additional 5% attack and defense for all allies per extreme class ally on the team so basically you just want to run a full extreme class ally uh, base team so basically just extreme class and you know she'll get a substantial buff from that and then she gets a hundred percent attack and defense when there are only extreme class allies attacking in the same turn so again she's basically restricted to extreme class base teams but again with the teams that she's on that's not very hard to do uh, the only team that I could see that being an issue is peppy gals as, as well as siblings bond crossover has a lot of uh, extreme class units so it is time travelers uh, you're probably only really going to be using her in time travelers and crossover not really battle of wits because again battle of wits is mostly kind of like fusion based so again she's i mean she's good for sure like i like as a support type unit she's very good uh but again she's limited to being basically on extreme class category teams so now we're going to be talking about demigra uh, demigra is a unit that it like all units that I've said before, is a very solid unit. Um, I think he could have been a little bit better, though, considering that how Dokkan has uh, done with, uh, you know, awakenings uh, with units so far. So he's all types 3 key, 70% 70, uh, 70 to stats, super attack. He has a medium chance of stunning the enemy, which uh, with J uh, JP that just got the update is a 30% chance. But again, we don't have that here just yet. Uh, his passive, he gets 120% attack and defense, plus an, an additional 60% attack and defense when there are only extreme class allies attacking in the same turn. So same thing with Toa. You basically want to run him on an extreme class uh, team build. And then he has a high chance of stunning the attacked enemy in the same turn. Um, and then turned into giant form when conditions are met. And then he turns into his giant form. Uh, when HP is 60% or less and, and he has a high chance of doing it so when you fall under 60% HP he has a 50-50 chance of turning into his uh, giant form if we take maybe just a peek 
at what his giant form does. Please connect. Come on. Don't do me like this. Let's see. So, yep, he just gets a single key, uh, just like the Vegeta. And let's take a look at Mira. Alright. So Mira has a transformation, uh, but in his base, uh, he's physical 3 key, 90% to stats. Again, useless. Uh, he raises attack and defense, so he is a defensive stacker, which is really good. He gets 100% attack and defense when performing a super attack. Already very, very solid, so you want to run him in the third or second slot. Um, he gets an additional 30% attack when there are only extreme class allies attacking in the same turn. Again, extreme class uh, build is where you want to run this guy. He gets one key with each super attack performed, up to three. Absorption when conditions are met. So his transformation conditions is he absorbs Toa and Toki Toki's egg when HP is 60% or less, starting from the fourth turn from the start of battle. So not the most horrible condition, but again, Dokkan really needs to do something about this whole turn and HP restriction. And then once he transforms, he only raises attack and causes supreme damage to the enemy. Uh, and then his passive is 120% attack and defense when performing a super attack. Medium chance of launching an additional super attack. Plus an additional 3 key and 30% attack when there are only extreme class allies attacking in the same turn. Uh, in the same turn. In the same turn. And then he's getting an additional 5% attack and defense per extreme class ally on your team. So just like the other three, you want to run him on a full extreme class build. You'll get uh, their full passive from that if you're just basically uh, running a full extreme class category team. Now the last unit, um, of course, is a unit that I've, I've already talked about in a previous video. Come on. There we go. But just to quickly go over them, uh, if everything goes as I've said, then again, this Frieza will be getting his easy area. So let's just... Oh! Mouse, don't fall. Come on. Come on. Come on. Please work for me. Just a little bit. Oh, no, too far. What invigorating. God, this must be so entertaining to watch, I swear. Come on, go up. No! Go up. How? Good lord. There we go. Thank god. Alright, so Frieza, after his EZA, I've already went over this. So, again, if those of you who have already seen... Uh, the video that I made going over the units, both for Frieza's EZA and their details. Uh, but again, for those of you who have not, uh, you know, seen the video, this is what Frieza does after his EZA. He's extreme class 4 key, 90% to stats, so a decent uh, leader skill if you're a free-to-play player. Also, super class 3 key, 70% to stats. Uh, on his 12 key, he greatly raises attack and defense. And then on his 18 key, he greatly lowers attack and defense, so... Um, his 18 key super attack effect, again, is good for super battle road. Uh, his passive, he gets 50% attack and defense. He gets 3 key and an additional 50% defense as the first or third attacker in the turn. And an additional, let's move this mouse for a bit, attack plus 50% when performing an ultra super attack. And he gets an additional 3 key when attacking super class allies. Not allies, but enemies. So Frieza, very, very good. Very solid unit, very good LR. Um, again, I'm personally still in the process of trying to EZA that goddamn Bardock, and then I'll move on to Krillin, and then once I finish him, that'll be the last unit that um, I'll need for Frieza's easy area. And then again, once that Frieza easy area comes out, I still need to farm up Frieza. <laughs> I don't have enough metals to completely Dokkan Awaken him into an LR. So we'll see how this goes, uh, but yeah. Just looking at it, if this is what the celebration looks like, if we... Oh, no, that, that's Twitter. Wrong thing. If we go back to the timeline and it could load, again, if the celebration is looking the way that I think it might be, where, again, we have the banner, uh, the new units, the story event, infinite Dragon Ball history, ultimate clash, two easy A's, as well as an explosive chain battle, this will be a very, very good um, celebration. I forgot to mention also some awakenings. Uh, this is going to be a very, very good celebration. If it comes to happen the way I have described it, again, we'll probably get the news about the celebration probably today or tomorrow. 
Um, I would say we should probably get the news when JP starts their anniversary, uh, just so that they could kind of do kind of like a mirroring thing where uh, JP gets the uh, gets the anniversary while Global then gets the uh, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta celebration info. So, anyways, guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. Um, again, you guys can comment down below what you guys think. Personally, I am very excited for Gogeta. The only issue is I will not be summoning for him. I made a promise to myself that I would only save my Dragon Stones for the anniversary because once I saw that it was Evolution Blue Vegeta and UI Goku, I make this resolve every single year since the fourth year anniversary that I do not summon on any banner until the anniversary banners come out. So... <sighs> maybe I'll throw maybe one multi at it, you know, just, you know, just because why not? But again, don't expect to see a summoning video, like, where I go, you know, really deep on this banner, even though I really want to because I know Gogeta is so good. Um, I will not be going hard at all in, uh, at this banner, so. Uh, anyways, guys, uh, that is going to do it for today's video. If you not have already please go down there hit the subscribe button we're at 49 subscribers let's make it 50 and then our goal for the rest of the year is to get to 100 subscribers let's see if we can make that happen and yeah so just go down there subscribe show and show me your support post the notification bell i post every single day and i'll see you guys next time